Wix and WordPress are two of the most popular names in website design. Wix is a website design platform, a WYSIWYG editor, and what you see is what you get. So that means you can drag stuff around and drop it wherever you want on the page, and the way you design the page visually is exactly the way your website's going to look. WordPress is a content management system, which means just out of the box, WordPress is really software that helps users manage their different content, add content, modify content without needing any technical expertise. So neither of these platforms require any specific coding knowledge. Being able to code is definitely helpful. At least HTML and CSS is gonna help you. But again, you don't have to. You could, you could design a great looking WordPress or Wix site without knowing a lick of any programming language. So the question is, which one of these platforms is really best for a small business? Um, probably an owner operator maybe who's, who's trying to design their website themselves or maybe get it designed on a budget. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about the design tools. So the actual visual design tools you, you're going to use in Wix and in WordPress can be pretty different. So Wix's are built into the editor. Wix is really all focused around the Wix editor, which is our visual drag and drop design tool. WordPress doesn't necessarily have anything like that. So they have the Gutenberg editor, which is, I guess it's not that new anymore. The past couple of years it's come out. And then we also have page builder plugins like Elementor and Beaver Builder. Elementor is one of the, one of the most popular ones. I actually prefer Beaver Builder, but I've used both of them a bunch. Um, they both can are perfectly capable of creating great looking sites. So these design tools, I think can you can push designs a lot further with some of these design tools on WordPress. Meaning you, you can make something that, that's um, just better looking, more more advanced, more custom, cooler animations, that kind of stuff. Um, but that said, you can make something that looks really great on Wix too. It like like I said, you can basically customize almost every piece um, there's a, there's a few limitations but you you can make something that's that's pretty unique um, and, and stands out well on Wix Wix isn't really although they have templates it's not template driven meaning you can start with a completely blank slate and um, de design up from there so I think if you've never used any design tools before you're brand new to web design it's gonna be easier to make something in the Wix editor than it is with one of the uh, WordPress page builders. They're pretty, they're, the way they work is they're essentially user interfa interfaces for writing HTML and CSS. And I think if you don't know any HTML and CSS, they're gonna be a little confusing. There's some things that aren't gonna make sense. Whereas Wix is purposefully designed with people who have no prior experience in design or technology in mind. So which one's more popular? WordPress powers something like 35% of the web, or at least that's what they claim. That's a huge number. I don't know exactly how many websites are on there. That's probably billions of sites. It, Wix powers something like 200 million websites. That's still a lot. Um, and they're, they're a billion dollar company, which you know is fantastic. They're definitely not as big as WordPress, but I think part of that is because WordPress is older. It has a more international reach and you can build WordPress sites. Typically, you can build them for cheaper. There's definitely ways to do that. So I think that makes it a little bit more uh, accessible in that way. So if you, if you wanna base your decision based on popularity, then WordPress would be the winner, but I don't think that's the whole story. So let's talk about pricing and the cost of help if you were to hire a professional designer to design a website for you. So some of the prices, some of the costs associated with a website are you're gonna have to pay for a domain name and if you aren't too particular about the domain name you get, then usually it's gonna be something like 12, 15 bucks a year, right? So that's not too terrible. Um, you'll also have to pay for a hosting plan. So a hosting plan is essentially you're paying for space on a server where the files that make up your website live. They have to be on somebody else's server so that everybody else on the internet can access these files on that server. So you have to pay. You can't have a website and not be paying for a hosting plan because people have to access it, okay? So on Wix, they have different plans. They vary. I think the cheapest ones are maybe like $12, $15 a month, going up to $40 to $50 a month, depending on, depending on the services you need and whether you're paying monthly or annually. WordPress 
hosting can vary a lot more. So uh, at the very low end, with um, with some services like oh, what's this one called? Let me see, uh, DreamHost, yeah, or Bluehost, you can get a you can get WordPress hosting for like three dollars um, a month, which is crazy. You can also go with some of the bigger companies like WP Engine. If you have a really big site, like for example, I think Disney.com is a WordPress site. Um, and I think they work with WP Engine. If you did that, you could be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars a month for, for some really advanced hosting. So in general, Wix is going to be pretty pretty cheap still, you know, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks a month. But if, you, if price is really your number one concern, then WordPress is going to be one of the absolute cheapest ways to host a website. If you've never built a website, then you're probably going to want to use a template. So the templates available to use are going to be a concern for you, most likely, if you've never done this before. So they have great templates on Wix. Some of their old ones are pretty terrible, um, but they're making new ones, and I think a lot of the new ones look great um, and are definitely a great starting point for a business. They use the same fonts a lot, which bugs me. Um, but their templates look good, so I think there's you know 800, 1,000 templates to pick from for all different kinds of uh, use cases, uh, examples, right, different blogs and um, small business websites and that kind of thing. So Wix has some good templates. Usually page templates for WordPress are going to be dependent on the page builder that you're using. So like I said, two of the most popular are Elementor and Beaver Builder. I use Beaver Builder. They've got some good templates, but they don't really have a huge selection. I pretty much never use them. I just built it from scratch. I just designed the pages from scratch. I think Elementor does have some more templates to pick from. Um, to be honest, I haven't really used too many of them, but I'm sure I'm sure they've got some good stuff. A lot of people think that you can base the look of your WordPress site off of the theme you pick, but a lot of times, if you're getting some free or cheap, really cheap theme on Theme Forest and Vato, whatever. Um, it's going to be really restrictive in in the way that you can design it and you're if you're like me and you don't have that that full control over the visual look then you're not going to be happy with that so you're going to end up using one of these page builder plugins and those page builder plugins have their own themes so the actual theme you pick um, should be associated with a page builder plugin otherwise you're going to be frustrated ease of use is huge especially if you're building and managing your site yourself so which one's easier, Wix or WordPress? Wix is definitely easier. Uh, I think it's a lot easier. I've taught people how to build sites that look, that look pretty decent in a couple days just with you know, a couple free videos. I've got a course, um, if you watch that course, it's four or five hours. Um, that's a great way to learn the basics of Wix. Um, and then you know, some, some Googling and stuff and, and you'll probably be able to make a halfway decent Wix site. It's not gonna look professional, probably. It's not gonna look like you paid somebody real money to get it done, but it's, it's not gonna look terrible. Um, WordPress is a lot more difficult. It's people, <laughs> people have a lot, a lot of struggles with WordPress. And I think a big part of that is because it's open source software, meaning anybody can contribute to it. And then you also have all these plugins and plugins are just literally, there's like little pieces of code that you're plugging into the website to get some functionality. Um, you, you have all those that are being created by all kinds of different people. There's very little kind of control or enforced standards the way you would have with Wix, for example, since Wix is, is backed by a large corporation. And so what that means is you end up having a lot of bugs. That's just been what I've seen with people who, who are building WordPress sites themselves and don't know what they're doing and don't know how to determine whether the theme or the plugin that they're using is safe um, or works well or is even being maintained still or if it's from five years ago. So I see people have a ton of headaches with WordPress. I think a WordPress site can be a great idea if you are going to pay for somebody to build it for you and then pay for somebody to manage it and maintain it for you. If you're going to be doing it all yourself, and you've never done this before and it's going to be your only website, you're going to be so annoyed with WordPress when things start going wrong. I just, I've just seen it a million times. So you're going to have a much easier time going with Wix. You can also go to Squarespace, get an e-commerce store, Shopify. Um, but just 
the headaches that come from management of a WordPress site when you don't know what you're doing really aren't worth it. Okay, now SEO. Wix and WordPress are both completely capable of ranking at the top of Google for whatever you're trying to, to rank for. Um, I read a study that found absolutely no difference in, in the performance of Wix sites versus WordPress sites. So they're both fine to use uh, in terms of SEO. You can be successful in search with either one. Now that said, now one big factor though with SEO is how quickly your page loads. Used to Wix had some issues with page speed. They've actually sped up a lot. They're actually one of the faster platforms now. WordPress can be the fastest if you have a well-optimized site, probably if it's professionally built by somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, but a lot of times when you build WordPress sites yourself, you end up sticking a million plugins in there. Um, you have this really bloated website uh, in terms of all the software and content on the back end. So it ends up being really slow and that is going to hurt you in, in SEO. So talking about the plugins, what kind of apps and plugins and that kind of thing are available for, for these two platforms? The Wix App Store, or I don't know, I think they call it the App Marketplace, uh, has something like 300 apps. So that's honestly not a ton. You can do most of the, you can, you can find apps for most of the functionality a small business would need. So whether that's bookings or um, setting up events, adding a blog, doing like MailChimp forms and stuff, there's probably an app for that on Wix, but it's not the same as WordPress plugins. WordPress has 50,000 plus plugins available, it's probably even more than that. Um, you can, with the use of plugins, you can basically make your WordPress site do whatever you want, become whatever kind of site you want. A lot of people basically make these Frankenstein sites where they have a bunch of different plugins doing all these different things on WordPress, and they make these really kind of complex uh, web apps out of their out of their WordPress websites. So I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of options now. Again, like I said earlier, one of the downsides with these plugins is pretty much anybody can make them. You end up with buggy apps sometime with these buggy plugins, and you uh, can end up with some issues. A lot of times, there's also conflicts between different plugins or conflicts between the themes, where uh, between the theme and the plugin. Whereas on Wix, all the apps on their app store are vetted by their corporation, right, by Wix, to to make sure that they all work together with each other. So to me, that's an advantage just in and really kind of avoiding again that headache of having some annoying plugin conflict or bug or issue. So which one is better at blogging? I've talked about content marketing before on this channel. It's a great way to grow your business, to gain, gain followers and gain an audience. Um, in my experience, so Wix does have a blog app. It's not bad. You can do all the normal stuff, right? You can set up categories and tags and schedule posts out and stuff. Um, nothing wrong with it. You can have a blog there. I find WordPress, you can push your blog a lot further. It's much more customizable. You can customize your blog feed more. Um, I've, I've just seen much more impressive WordPress blogs out there. You can, you know, add custom author boxes, which is on Wix. Um, but you, you can, you can, again, you can push it a little further on WordPress. So if your number one thing is blogging, I would probably do a WordPress site over a Wix site. All right, e-commerce. So both, both platforms have e-commerce functionality. You can set up a store on Wix with their Wix stores app or whatever it's called. And then on WordPress, you can set up WooCommerce. I've used both of these before many times uh, for various clients. They, I don't really like either of them, to be honest. Uh, but they're both fine. Um, so Wix, Wix's advantage in e-commerce is that it's really easy to set up. It's very kind of no-brainer stuff. Um, so if you're if you have a site that's not completely dedicated to e-commerce, you just you know maybe you're whatever you're a fan page for a sports team or something, and on the side you want to sell some T-shirts. All right, then Wix's uh, e-commerce is probably fine for you. Um, but I wouldn't use it to to run a serious online store. They just don't have nearly the feature options of some more feature-rich 
platforms like Shopify. Um, kind of same thing with WordPress. I mean, so you can push a WordPress, so a WooCommerce store pretty far. You can do a lot of cool features and everything. Uh, it's definitely better than Wix in terms of the, the sophistication of the kinds of e-commerce stores you can build. I find, again, <laughs> like I've said before already about WordPress, you end up with a lot of kind of bugs and issues. Uh, a lot of just an annoying little bugs is, has been my experience. Um, if I was going to build an e-commerce store, and actually I do currently build e-commerce stores, I almost always build them on, on Shopify. I think this, that's not even what this video is about. This was this was a video for Wix versus WordPress. But if you have a, if you're building an e-commerce store just for e-commerce, I would actually build it on Shopify. I wouldn't waste my time with Wix or WordPress. Here's kind of a little bonus question: If you wanted to start a web design studio or start freelancing as a web designer, which one should you specialize in? If it's a tough question. If you don't have any experience and you're looking to start kind of like a side hustle, I would probably go with Wix. If you have some design experience and especially some development experience, or you're willing to learn to code to at least kind of like an intermediate level, at least learn the basics of um, HTML and CSS, but also JavaScript and PHP, then I think WordPress is going to be a better bet. It, the products are going to be bigger on WordPress, you're going to get paid more on WordPress and you're going to work with bigger companies so they're probably going to have more recurring business for you. That said, at this point, so I started solely as a WordPress freelancer and now I would say the, the, the significant majority of the sites I built on Wix just because they're easier to build, they're faster, I have a better time doing them. But I'm a designer, I'm not a developer. I know HTML and CSS, but I don't know JavaScript, I don't know PHP. So, and that's probably where a lot of my kind of the roadblocks I've run into with um, WordPress in the past have been. So if, you, if you're if you a pure designer, probably stick with Wix, maybe even think about Squarespace or something. If you have some development skills, uh, look into WordPress. Again, I think you're gonna get paid more on WordPress per project. That said, if you're a good salesperson, you can just do more projects on Wix. I mean, I make a great living doing mostly Wix sites these days, so you can be successful with either one. But yeah, if you're more designer, maybe go with Wix. If you're more developer, maybe go with WordPress. So to sum up, I think if you're a brand new business or you're a very small business with very little revenue, if you're not looking to hire a professional on an ongoing basis to take care of your website, I would build the site on Wix. It's going to be easier, you're going to have less headaches. You can build it faster, you can build it you know, in a, in a week and have something serviceable. Um, that said, if you have a big budget um, and you can hire, you know, if you're an established company and you can hire a professional to design a website, maintain it for you, take care of it, um, then I would go with WordPress. You're probably gonna get a more technically advanced, more custom final product. So, so I think there's definitely a reason for the existence of Wix and WordPress. I think they can coexist happily with each other, uh, even if they don't always. But yeah, to sum up, if you're brand new, probably go with Wix. If you have some development experience or you have a budget, go with WordPress.